What's the word, y'all? I can't even lie. The quarantine life ain't been too bad, man. Especially when we got days like today, nine game slate, and it just feels like there's a storyline that you could take from every single game. Now we will talk about some other things towards the end of the video, but we're gonna focus heavily on the Sacramento Kings, who at one point was down by 60 today. And don't hit me with the De'Aaron Fox wasn't. Play. They were down by 60 today as an NBA organization. And then the second thing that we're gonna talk about is the second biggest blown game in NBA history. 25, uh, 35, 36 points or whatever. The Clippers came all the way back on the Washington Wizards and that got things crazy. I didn't wanna make another toxic video. We just did it with the Boston Celtics and guess what? Celtics fans, a couple big W's, a 50 piece from Jason Tatum and today you're up by 60 at one point. So when we do these toxic subreddit dives, Maybe it's a good thing, you know what I'm saying? So uh, the Washington Wizards, let's focus on them first because I was watching their game and they were up by so much, I turned it off. I'm like, why do I have to watch the rest of this? Daniel Gaffer started off really, really nice and really good. And of course, with no Paul George, no Kawhi Leonard, no this player, no that player. It's like, okay, I like watching Amir Coffee. Luke Kennard could get, could get hot and Reggie Jackson's been a surprise. But like, there's not really a lot to watch. Boom, game over, right? Absolutely not. I tuned back in once it was back to a 10 point game. And then it was like 20 seconds to go and it was a seven pointer. And I was like, okay, let me go back to Lakers versus uh, Nets, right? Get the notification, Clippers win. What? What happened? So I had to go all the way back and watch the last 20 ish seconds again. And I cannot believe how much the Washington Wizards did not want to win this game. We got a five second violation. We got missed free throws, so many missed free throws in the last five minutes. Of um, And then look, this is what I hate what teams do, right? Oh, we're up by more than one possession. So we just basically not gonna play no defense because we don't want to foul. We just gonna trust our foul shooters. And, and the foul shooters missed. And now you got Luke Kennard turning into uh, Reggie Miller or maybe even T-Mac. He hits one from the logo and then gets a four point play to win. I, I'm just like, I wanna give the, the Clippers a lot of credit for sure, but this is more of a collapse. It, I mean, it's, I guess it's the tale of both, right? It, it takes a very special team to be down by 35, 36 points at one point and to come all the way back, definitely. But it takes a special team to blow that type of lead. And they did that. And I gotta give a lot of credit to coach uh, Tyron Lue. I am a guy that a few years ago, I was of the opinion that Tyron Lue wasn't that good of a coach and I am completely wrong. And I, I'm, I'm able to admit that. I'm on record saying like, man, Tyron Lue, he all right, but he ain't really like that. And then two playoffs in a row, he showed me like, oh, actually, I know my X and O's and I know how to counteract whatever the opposing coach is. And he's one of the better coaches in the league. I was wrong. Um, so it takes a lot for him to, to bring this team to do that. But the Wizards, uh, we talked about in yesterday's video when we were going through that three trade targets from every NBA team. I was saying, I don't know what the direction for the Wizards is, right? Uh, because they have so many quality NBA players on their roster, they were running like an 11-man rotation in the first half of a game. And you got some players that are not getting a lot of PT that are worried they're getting PT, but they got all of that. I'm saying all that, and they are struggling to win games. This team is one of the hottest teams in basketball once the season started, and they have been going down and down and down. And Kuzma in this post-game interview was like, hey, something's got to change. And then the uh, spaces happen, you know? I follow some people in Lakers Twitter, right? So when the Lakers have a, a catastrophe of a loss, um, some of the bigger names in Lakers Twitter go on and, and uh, um, a spaces, a Twitter spaces, and they just rant. They talk about the game, the X's and O's, and what they saw that they didn't like. And honestly, I will say this: I'm, I'm a little sadistic. I like to see. <laughs> I like when people are upset. I like to listen to people that, as long as it's like something that doesn't matter, like sports. You know what I'm saying? I don't want anybody to be upset about something that actually matters. So I saw that Washington Wizards fans were also doing the Twitter spaces. So I tuned in. They had like 800, 900 people I got in there and they were going at it. At one point it got all the way up to like 4,000 people that was just listening. And I would say like 70, 80, 90% of those people weren't even Wizards fans. We was all, all there for the for the rants. And it's, it's good to hear people that are rooting for a team give their opinions, right? Because I'm just a dude that enjoys watching basketball. I'm not in the ins and outs of everything. So to see and listen to Washington Wizards fans say, blow it up, trade Bradley Beal, or we should have traded him while we could when he had the most value, it's interesting to me. Um, because, well, Bradley Beal is one of those players that's up for a Supermax extension soon. And he's also one of those players that doesn't seem like he'll actively say i'm ready to be traded similar to damian lillard right i want to say loyal to the city i want to win it here i want to win it in washington and and though the fans i think the fans do 
adore Bradley Beal and what he has done for the team. And you can argue what they really, has he done it? What he has done for the team based on that Twitter spaces, a lot of them want to see him gone. And it's not like, oh, we hate him. It's like, what is the ceiling with Bradley Beal as your best player? Right? Bradley Beal, probably more of a two on a really good team than a one on an okay team. Right? We talk about an all-star player, but he's just an all-star player. Right? And what is the value of what Bradley Beal can, what can he bring at the deadline if you were willing to trade him? A little while ago, it was like, hey, we could get us Ben Simmons for him. Is Daryl Morey thinking about Bradley Beal when he got the other rumors about James Harden is dropping? I will say, um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Daryl Morey and the 76ers throwing out all these rumors because they want the world to believe. Anyway, so I don't know. I know that was a long intro to say, hey, let's go into the watch. It was a subreddit, but that's what we're about to do. Oh, we are, we getting Ben Simmons photoshopped in Wizards jerseys on the, and it's got 130 upvotes. They ready for it. They ready for it. And I don't, I don't blame them. They got G Wiz saying that he trying to explore other options outside of DC. David Aldrich, the most pathetic performance in 40 years of covering the Wizards. That's David Aldrich. 40 years. I've been seeing a lot of these on Twitter. Um, because Spencer Dinwiddie hasn't really played, has not really, he has not played well in Washington. He's got a couple like 20 point games under his belt, but for the most part, he hasn't been nearly as, as good of a player as they expected. And again, he's coming off a major injury, so I may want to give him a slight pass there, but, but okay, let's go to the new posts. We just witnessed the NBA version of 28 to three. I'm not going to elaborate on that. Um, especially since this, a grander scheme is the Super Bowl rather than the random regular season game in January. But I understand what you're kind of saying. Get rid of Bill. Get rid of him at all costs. I don't care if all we get is a second round. <laughs> this is why we're here, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we're here, ladies and gentlemen. Because this same dude, Matt, and I don't want to call you out specifically, but you just so happen to be here in this moment. If they did trade Bradley Beal for a second round pick, you would come to the subreddit and say, what is Tommy Shepard doing? Like, let's be real. I don't care if it's a second round pick. He must not be re-signed to a max deal. And this says resigned. Resigned is R-E, like, dash, signed. Because this is resigned. But I understand. Um... He's such an embarrassment. And this top comment says, I mean, I kind of care if we, <laughs> that we get more than a second round pick. Should the Wizards fire Wes Unsell Jr.? I'm not even going into the comment section. Emphatically. No. What the hell? I mean, I understand, yes, he just gave up the second biggest lead in the history of basketball, but no. He's a first year coach. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you mean? A, a month into the season, people was giving this man coach of the year nods. You can't, it's not, we not flip-flopping like that. You feel me? Is he the perfect coach? No. Is he a good coach? I don't know. It's too early to really tell. Utter disbelief. Been a Wiz fan for 10 years, and it's by far the most painful loss I've ever witnessed. The Bulls lost in 2019. I remember that one. Where we blew a 20-point fourth quarter lead is a close second, but the lack of execution that we had to have to give up, give him a chance is unbelievable. I mean, you're... I have dyslexia. I mean, pick your poison on what to blame. Wes going with the same unit even though they got bad. Bench and Gaffer had 12 points in 12 minutes of great defense. That was something I was confused with too. Like I mentioned earlier, Gaffer started off this game very hot, very good. Um, keeping Dinwiddie in when he's shooting two for 10, one for seven for three. This is the real, this is the real question. What do you think Bill's value even is? Um, at least he's at the top of the Sixers list. You would hope so. If that is the case, Tommy Shepard needs to make that deal tomorrow. Um, because again, it just feels like you're not getting any place with Bradley Beal as your one. So let's just hit a quick little reset. You have enough pieces around on your team that if you wanted to go complete reset and get a bunch of future assets or young players, that would be super easy to do. Or you could just bring in Ben Simmons, what you currently have, and just let just rock what you what you got. Would people be open to a Michael Porter Jr., Zeke, Bones, and Picks? Let me know in the comment section. I don't want to spend too much time here in the Wizards subreddit. But if you're if you're on the outside looking in, if the if the Denver Nuggets was like, hey, we don't know what's going on with Michael Porter Jr.'s back, but if you want to take the chance on it, the max contract, the near max contract we gave him with back surgery, this is not a good trade. Ah, just because you don't know what you're getting from Michael Porter Jr. But hey, for the Nuggets, do you get Jamal Murray back eventually? <laughs> I would love that for them, dog. I would love that for them. Because, again, Bradley Beal is the number two behind Jokic would be elite. And I guess, oh, I was in here. Hey, that's me. I was in this spaces. I just talked about that. But I guess Bradley Beal's wife ended up listening to us. So she probably heard a lot of the stuff that was said about him. 
um, and, and the team. The spaces, I will say, got extremely toxic. Probably a little bit too toxic for my liking. Um, but hey, a lot of people was in there. Again, as an outside NBA fan, this is great for me just because does that open up the eyes of the Washington Wizards to make some trades? We'll see. Um, the next big game that we want to spend some time on, and not as much time as the Wizards one, because that, the Wizards one's like a once in a lifetime. Again, the second biggest lead in NBA history. Um, the next one is the Kings being down by 60 at one point. Um, this is from the Jays, Jason and Jalen. And if you've been around the channel for the entire season, you've watched all these videos, you will understand why I say I'm not going to talk about the Celtics. If you know, you know. I'm not I'm not about to do that to y'all again. Um, but it was good to see the Jays on the same page again and get a win. We're going to leave it at that. The Sacramento Kings lost this game. Harrison Barnes shot one for 12. Um, Tyrese, 22%. The team as a whole shot 30%, 18% from three. And it was one of the most embarrassing losses of their season, which is saying something because it's the Kings, right? Um, no De'Aaron Fox, but still, I, again, I don't care what team you throw out on the court as professional athletes, prof professional basketball players, you should never be down by 60. And this is a team that, for the most part, is only missing De'Aaron. Um, Tyrese, Rashawn, Bag, and Harrison Barnes, um, t even TD, Mo Harkless, Davion, Buddy Heal, these are guys that are in their real-life rotation. And yes, they're missing their best player, but you were down by 60. It's not about you losing. It's about how you lose in this case. And the only person on the team to score double-digit points this game is Buddy Hill, and it took him 14 shots to get 11 points. It's bad. It was really bad. And there's a lot of rumors going around in the Sacramento Kings in the last month or so about, hey, we might be willing to take on Tobias Harris's contract to bring in Ben Simmons. We might be willing to trade De'Aaron Fox for the right package. We might be willing to throw Tyrese Halliburton and a bunch of picks to get Ben Simmons. Just so many things are, are behind the scenes right now as far as the rumor mills go with the Sacramento Kings that a loss like this, another eye-opening loss. Again, with all of that being said, as crazy as it is because of the play-in, this team Oh, no, this is a big loss. Actually, the Spurs won today. And now the team that was sitting at 11 is now 13. Again, it's only one game difference between 13 and 11. But they're still in the hunt for a playoff spot or a play-in spot, which, again, semantics, I'm not calling the play-in playoffs. If the Kings ended up making a play-in, don't tell me that their playoff streak is over or a drought is over because they're not. You have to be in a seven-game series in my own personal eyes. Anyway, I did want to dive deep into their subreddit. Welcome to basketball hell. Is is <laughs> I don't know if this was like this yesterday. I don't know, but that's amazing. This is indeed basketball hell. Hey, ain't even gonna hold you, bro. A video like this as a fan would drive me crazy. Bro, we lost we the final score, we lost by 53. I don't care about you dapping people up. You know it's the NBA. You only play this Eastern Conference team uh, uh two times a season. What is you so happy for? We lost by 50. And you, he not just like, oh, what's up, bro? That, he is like cackling, laughing. And, <laughs> and you know what? This, the funny thing is, we saw something like this before with the Bulls a couple years ago. The Bulls gave up a huge lead to Chris Paul and then Shea Gillis Alexander, OKC Thunder. And after the game, Wendell Carter and Kobe White took pictures with Chris Paul because they played for Chris Paul's like AAU team. And I will be honest, in that moment in time, I was a low-key mad. We just blew a 20-point lead in the fourth quarter to, to Chris Paul. And we like, ah, oh, dang, we lost. Jeez, like, come on, dog. So, yeah, I understand why this makes a lot of people mad. I understand it. <laughs> this is a good point. That's Buddy, only person to score more than 10 points healed for uh, to you. Hey, Buddy might be smiling. Like, hey, I, I was our best player today. <laughs> I was the MVP of us. So, hey, I ain't got no reason to frown. No, nah, that's, that's trash. We're going to get to this post-game thread for sure. Somebody asked, what can we do as fans? Suffer. Got you. I'm a clown for paying for this. And bro got good tickets, too. He paid a lot of money for that just to see his team lose by so much. Um, Yeah, I screenshotted about this point, too. 33 points is kind of ridiculous. No, re you know what? We can get out of here. Let's talk about the other games. Let's start off with Joel Embiid. I dropped the whole video about why Joel Embiid should be an MVP conversation. So if you missed that um, a little while ago, I recommend going to watch it. But today, a 42-14-4 game where they were... Um, at one point, I was watching this game and there was a graphic that popped up on screen. Joel Embiid and Tobias Harris had scored the last 35 points for the 76ers at one point. Those two players had scored 35 points in the row. No other person to touch the ball for the 76 had scored, which is crazy. 
Um, and yes, uh, Harold Gomez did almost give him 30 or 10 on the other end. But whatever, you win a game. I mean, it's another 40 piece. I mean, he's averaging like 40 something points per game this year or something like that. Our next game, Nikola Jokic versus Kay Cunningham, a matchup I didn't think I needed to see. This year's draft class has been so amazing. Um, it has been a lot of Evan Mobley being number one for me personally, but climbing up the ranks is Kay Cunningham. If you were to ask me right now, who is your rookie of the year? I think it is still Evan Mobley, but it's not like he's untouchable. Kay Cunningham is really coming for that. So you got Evan Mobley, Kay Cunningham, you got Scotty Barnes still. Mo Wagner had a couple, like a month and a half stretch where he was in, uh, in, in, incredible. Josh Giddy, Jonathan Kaminga today. Again, when Jonathan, Jonathan Kaminga gets minutes, he hoops his butt off. James Booknight today. I saw a statistic that was like when James Booknight gets over 15 minutes per game, he's averaging like 15 points per game. So, um, Ayo DeSumo, who just had almost a perfect game a couple nights ago. This draft class just has so many quality NBA players right now as a rookie. Like, this draft class, again, it, it depends on how they progress, who's going to be a superstar, yada, yada. But strictly based on impact on their rookie season... This draft class has got to be towards the top. It's got to be like top five. Not to mention Chris Dorte had like 27 points in the game that they beat the Warriors last week. And he still got Herb Jones too. So K Cunningham in this game um, was incredible. And I saw a statistic. It was like one of those super cherry pick statistics. But I like super cherry pick statistics. So if you see a cherry pick statistic, please send it to me because I enjoy those. Okay. Only rookies in NBA history with 34 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists, Four blocks in a single game. Super cherry pick. But it's only a company of two. It's Michael Jordan and Kate Cunningham, ladies and gentlemen. There's a point in this game where Cade hit a three, got a block, laid it up, got a stop, and then hit another three. And like, and if I'm not mistaken, it was either late third quarter, or early fourth quarter, where he was trying to keep his team in the game. Again, this is the Pistons. And this is the Pistons without Jeremy Grant in the lineup. You know what I'm saying? This is not a good team by any measure. Kate Cunningham made this a game. And no, he didn't shoot any free throws, but when I watched that game, there was multiple times where he could have got a foul call. And I think in his post-game interview, he said, oh, I think I got to scream loud when I get hit. Yeah, why not? Why not? Everybody else say, hey, when they go up and get contact, you need to do that. And yes, as a rookie, you probably not going to get a lot of calls, but he deserved to at least take a couple free throws in this game. Um, and Nicole Jokic is again, another stellar performance, man. 28, 21, and 9. I think this is his fourth 2020 game of the season. And I think there's only been six total this season, according to a stat I saw earlier today. So he's got four of the six uh, 2020 games this year. Just incredible how he's able to do literally everything on the court for his team. Next game, uh, Pascal Siakam with a 20, uh, 24, 12, re or 12 assists, 9 rebound game. Got that one rebound away from a triple-double, but this is a big win for the Toronto Raptors, who at one point was on a super hot streak and then cooled down. And now, with a win like this, they back up to the eighth seed, which is good for them. You want to be eight. You don't want to be nine or ten. You don't want to be the team that needs to win two games. You want to be a team that only needs to win one to secure their playoff spot. The Lakers win a game when Anthony Davis came back. Now, Anthony Davis only played 24 minutes and only scored eight points, but they didn't really need him to do anything because you got the Brooklyn Nets who are just going through it. Kevin Durant is gone. This is a home game, so no Kyrie Irving. James Harden had a stellar performance, but like it's, it's only so much he could do in this one. And, um, and they were asking him things after the game about the rumors that were associated with him. Like, cause there was a rumor that came out today that he's not enjoying his time in Brooklyn because of the nightlife and, and because of the city. He really enjoyed how Houston's was and this and that. And they asked him about it at the end of the game. He said, did you hear that come from me? They said, no. He said, okay then. Um, so we'll see how true those James Harden rumors are. I'm sure it depends on um, the playoffs. Will the, the Brooklyn Nets go on to win a championship? Does that matter his decision this offseason? But it is interesting to see some of the things that are coming off. LeBron had a streak, and, and I think this is the third quarter where he got a block, dunk, steal, dunk. The man has just been incredible. I don't know what else I can say about LeBron James this season. He's been great. I want to see the Lakers pile on a couple of these, though. With Anthony Davis being back, it can potentially lighten the load for Braun so you don't have to average 40 points per for them to even, even be in games. Um, but hopefully AD can get back to complete health. And boom, just like that, a team that we were making fun of as a 500 team might be slightly above 500. Maybe. Who knows? Probably not. Because that's just the way the league goes. I mentioned Jonathan Kaminga. Uh, it just seems like anytime he gets big time PT, he has a crazy, crazy game. And this one, 9 for 10 from the field, 4 made 3s from the guy, and 22 points in 17 minutes. 
behind the back pass from I think it was Clay Thompson at one point to Jonathan Kaminga, and they just blew this game out of the water. I stopped watching this very early on, honestly. So I didn't even get to see the Jonathan Kaminga minutes, honestly. I'll watch him though, you know what I'm saying? I, I like to see rookies hoop, and he's a rookie hooper. And then lastly, Ant went out for a 40 point pointer, not an assist to his resume. Didn't need to. Didn't need, <laughs> didn't need to get one. There's a, a streak in this game where he was getting bucket after bucket, a steal, a dunk, and then he had hurt his leg, and he had got up, he got checked right back into the game. But who closed it? Who iced it? It's this guy. It's Mr. Ice in the Veins. And he did that um, goaltending game winner shot, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, I was watching this game with my boy Derek, who's a Portland Trailblazer fan, and he was just so upset. And I had to remind him, you're not playing for anything. It's better that you lose. It's literally better that you lose. So, it's, it's okay. Shout out to, I don't even remember who got the uh, who got the goaltender. Was it Robert Covington? Shout out to Robert Covington, keeping them in the losing column. And, yeah, there are some games that, that I didn't mention that I did not watch. Happened to be a Spurs game again. My apologies, Spurs fans. That's just the way it goes sometimes. 